Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. All right, it's Monday morning. I've been up since, feels like all night. I had a shit night's sleep. I got up because I had to pee, uh, I don't know, two, three o'clock, and I went into the bathroom and there was something in the vent above me. And, you know, of course I'm delirious. It's two, three o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, and all of a sudden I hear this like, I'm like, the frick was that? And earlier in the evening or in the day, when I was doing laundry and stuff, I walked around the corner and the cat was sitting in the bathroom very intently looking up at a spot. And I was like, oh great, there's probably a roach or something in there. And I walk into the room and I look up and I don't see anything. Now keep in mind, everything's white. So I, I would see that. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. And then all of a sudden I see little legs uh, in the fan. And clearly it was like a spider. At least I, oh, not clearly. Looked like a spider to me had gone up inside the, the venting on the fan. And I'm like, okay. I shut off the fan and, uh, you know, it went wherever the hell it went. And, and I told it, we've got a deal. Don't freaking be coming down on me, especially if I'm sitting there. If you drop on my head, I'm going to do bad things to you. And I left it at that. So now here I am in the middle of the night in the dark and I hear this weird noise up there. And it kept happening to the point where I had to get up again later, like way later, that I didn't even want to go into the bathroom or that bathroom. So I went into the master bathroom and peed there because it freaked me out. Now I still don't know what the hell's in there. And I'm convinced that there's something up in the attic, some kind of animal, whatever. I don't want to freak myself out saying a ghost or anything like that, but there's something up there. And I feel like I can hear it like running from side to side. And I, like, I don't know what it is. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? It's like 102,000 degrees up there. What is up there? And I, I'm sure as hell I'm not going to go up there by myself, you know, because then I'll just disappear into the rafters. So I don't know. I, eventually when those stupid vent things come, I'll probably call my HVAC guy and I'll go up there with him and see if I can't see something that, that's out of the ordinary up there, especially because I'm probably going to have to run power for those vent things. But anyways, yeah, so that... There's my freak out story for the day and why I slept like shit because after I left the bathroom, it freaked me out and I was awake. And now I just kept picturing shit like parasailing down from the freaking vents in the ceiling and going into my head. So yeah, shit night sleep. Now it's a half an hour before my normal Monday call and I need to get that out of the way. I only have a couple of small things to do for, for the day job after that. And other than that, I don't really plan on doing all that much. This weekend, since it was so pleasant out, I really made it a point to go out and take pictures and video and all that kind of stuff. And I tried a lot of stuff that, that either I haven't done much of or that I revisited. One of the things is, so here's my A7R 3 I've tried a couple of different setups with this thing. One is that I tried it without the grip, but I put the cage on it. And then two, I did it with the grip and I put the cage on it. And it's just monstrous, a little bit too monstrous, even for me. And I decided that I wanted to go back to the old school of when I shot Canon. And this was the setup. I basically had my Canon 40D with a grip and a 70 to 200 F 2.8 L lens. This is the Sony version, A7R 3 with the grip with the 70 to 200 F 2.8 G Master version two. And this, is what I used to walk around with all the time. It was my walk around setup and I loved it. So that's what I did this weekend. With the exception of when I went to Pleasure House Point yesterday, I once again tried the two times extender. Now I kind of have not necessarily bashed it, but I definitely felt a difference with it in that I didn't like it. I didn't like it with the 200 to 600, which is already a slow lens and I'm still not like you know, perfect with tracking and getting in-flight shots and all that kind of shit. I just found that it really, really made the autofocus incredibly slow and sometimes non-existent. And it just made all the pictures soft, but I'm already working on a slower lens. So this time I put it on back on, cause I've done this before. I put it back on the 70 to 200 version two. And the only reason I got the two times extender is because somebody told me with that new version two lens, that two times extender works really well. And now you've got basically a 100 to 400, or in this case, a 140 to 200, at, at like probably half the weight and a third of the cost. 
and you, obviously you know cost and weight doesn't really deter me too much, but I thought, okay, why not? So I bought the stupid two times extender and I put it on all this stuff, but I was using it on the A7R4. I just found that it wasn't as reliable and I was like, ah, screw it. I'm just gonna keep with the 200 to 600 because I'm pretty good with that and you know, whatever. So I did try it again this weekend and I got much better results. So I'll probably chalk that up to some user error. I'm still gonna say that it does slow down the autofocus a lot and that it has the potential to make the picture softer, but we're all hung up on, oh, it's gotta be super sharp. You've gotta get a denoiser and you gotta make every pixel like super sharp. No, you don't. You gotta capture the moment. And I captured a lot of moments with a lot of different birds and some like that little house finch uh, that they're like fast, frenetic, jumping from branch to branch to branch. I got a decent picture. Is it super tech sharp? No, and it doesn't need to be because everybody saw that I got a pretty little house finch sitting inside of a bush and I got a good picture out of it. So that's all I really care about. So I am gonna be using this a lot. Like this is gonna be my setup with this A7R3 unless I'm doing something specific, in which case I have like the, any of my other lenses on there. But for the most part, this is gonna be my walk around now. That's all I'm gonna blather on about for right now because I gotta get ready for this call but I just wanted to do something because the, the light finally shifted and it's not like coming directly in the window where, you know, I had my, the side of my face was like pure white. And I did put the, the little curtainy things there, those shimmery black curtains over there to try to cut it down because it was still really bad. And I keep looking at myself there and I can see that it, it's, it's all right. But yeah, so I'm shooting on my A7 IV with the 35G Master and I'm like halfway between the camera and the shelves. And of course, because of the way that, that I'm sitting at an angle, it makes the shelves look crooked, you know, so I'm sure that's gonna trigger a lot of people because I don't have it exactly straight or rule of thirds or whatever. So hmm, whatever. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, I gotta do this call and then figure out what the hell I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. So we'll figure it out together. Okay, kids, as usual, today just didn't quite work out how I thought. When I went out with the whole setup in the Forerunner to go do something, something turned out to be really not much at all. Ended up having to turn around, go back to gas station and get gas to get ready to leave tomorrow. And then by the time I got around there doing all that, I realized that uh, I needed to get home and do a couple of things because whilst I was out, I got notified by email that my debit card was used fraudulently and that I needed to call and take care of that. And I thought, okay, interesting. And then whilst I was on the phone with my buddy, I got a text telling me the same thing. And I thought, all right, now this is getting really weird. Then I got a phone call. And in the phone call, they left a message and they left a phone number that I needed to call. Well, I mean, I'm pretty paranoid or cautious when all that kind of weird shit happens. So I went back and I compared the phone numbers and all the numbers that were associated and the phone numbers were almost the same. They were off by one digit. The last digit in all of the emails and the texts was a seven, but the one on the phone number in the voicemail that they left me, it was a one. One and seven are kind of close looking, but I definitely heard the voice say one and the emails typed out seven. So I was like, okay, I'm not playing with that shit. The other thing is that it was some weird print house, like online print house where you can get like shirts and mugs and all kinds of weird shit made. And the charge was for 60 cents. Now I know in the world of screwing somebody over, you don't go out and try to charge $2,000 you just tap it a little bit and see if you can get something. Because 60 cents, in theory, doesn't look that odd. But when it's being charged in Florida and most of the chargers are coming from Virginia Beach, 60 cents looks a little weird. So I actually called my bank directly and long story short, they ended up, yep, it was fraudulent. They charged 60 cents and 10 cents, or they tried to. The bank stopped it and ended up having to cancel my card. So at this point now, it was 20 after four and I needed to hightail it to the bank because 
the woman said, you can just go to the branch and they'll print you a new card right there. Because if you wait for me to send you one, it can be up to 14 business days. And I was like, holy shit, I can't wait that long. So I ended up just like motoring over to the branch that I usually go to. And she was like, mm, yeah, sorry, hon. Uh, we don't have any cards. We're waiting for them to be delivered. And I was like, any idea when that's going to be? And she said, well, you could always go to another branch. I'm like, it's 25 to 5. Every branch closes at 5, and I'm going out of town. Where's the closest one other than here? I ended up going to the next closest one, and I swear to Zeus, I got behind every slow idiot that is in the lane that they don't belong in, and they're driving like they don't give a shit and they're not, they're not paying attention, but I ended up getting there at five minutes to five and my branch called that branch and told them that I was coming and what I was coming for. So she ended up just, boom, print me on a new card. So crisis averted. So that just goes to show you kids, be careful out there and watch where you're using your card and make sure you have it in a sleeve and blah, 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 blah. But even though I do all that shit, someone still hacked my freaking debit card. Fortunately, I didn't lose any money. Okay, at that point, I have now run all my reports. I've done all the day job stuff that I can do. I was gonna do my updates and everything, <laughs> but Salesforce is messed up because they're changing territories around, so it only shows me with two stores assigned to me, and those are stores somewhere else in the country, so the bottom line is I cannot do the updates until they fix that shit. Good, I don't have to dick around with it. So I'm gonna pack real quick, and then I gotta edit this video, and then I'm just gonna chill for the rest of the night until I gotta leave tomorrow morning. So I will be on the road for the next two days, I'm not gonna promise you a video tomorrow. I think I've got that flow down, but you never know what's gonna happen. And when I'm on the road, all bets are off. So that's all you get for today, maybe the next couple of days. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up. Don't steal people's shit.